Welcome to the future, ladies and gentlemen. Information is more accessible than ever, and the ability to learn what you want, when you want, has never been simpler. When consuming information, you've got web forums, news articles, blogs, YouTube videos, podcasts, and perhaps the king of real deep learning, books and audiobooks. In this video, I wanna talk about an interesting new way to consume the knowledge from books that I've coined as reverse summarization. Reverse summarization is a method whereby you leverage online generative AI tools like ChatGPT to provide insights into book contents and to learn about book topics to whatever depth you wish. And before I jump into those details, for those of you already rolling your eyes about AI's impacts on the incredible authors who put these works together, I'm going to address how to ethically use this information later in the video. For my example of its use, let's look for information about entrepreneurship. I asked ChatGPT for a list of top books on the topic and get back a list of 10. Number seven on the list just so happens to be one of my all-time favorites, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. But for this example, we'll assume that I've never read it before, so I ask for a summary of the key concepts. In response, I get a basic book summary and ultimately something not unlike what we may find elsewhere on the internet. This alone may be a great way to get a look into a book enough to decide whether to buy it or not. However, the power truly comes with follow-ups. In this case, the summary mentioned the concept of the golden circle, but I couldn't quite follow what it meant, so I can ask for clarification. Now you can start to see the power. We're taking a summary of a book and drilling down into the details, which is why I call it reverse summarization. In our example, we've now grasped the fact that the golden circle includes why, how, and what. Even though why and what makes sense, I need some help with how. I also think some detailed examples may help. And now we've got a pretty detailed explanation, including four real world examples to help illustrate the points. Now at this point, we could keep going, selecting additional concepts and asking for additional details and examples until we understand everything to the level we wish. Or we could ask for application of the book's concepts to another area, like this YouTube channel. Obviously, ChatGPT doesn't actually understand my YouTube channel, so it's creating generic ideas for applying the book's concepts to my business. However, this could be just the input I need to spark an idea or plan a next step in times where I may be lost. Or better yet, it may provide me with a starting framework to have on my mind as I begin to read the entire book. Now, while this method is super cool for exploring books and learning new information, I'm now going to share the reasons why you should not use this method. First, services like ChatGPT straight up make things up. What you're reading may be completely incorrect. For example, remember when I said it doesn't really know about my YouTube channel? Well, I asked for a summary of my channel and information on my top three videos. None of those videos actually exist. Adding insult to injury, I asked for a follow-up of how many subscribers the channel has, and it insisted I had 250,000, which I don't. As a result, use this method for topics where you seek inspiration more than factual information. Read books about leadership, self-help, time management, or other things driven by theories. Don't use it for serious fact-driven topics where being right or wrong could impact your health, finances, or overall well-being. The next limitation is that you will never get the full depth of understanding that truly reading a book will offer. You may grab some talking points, but you will never quite discover the true magic that makes a book great. Worse, you may fall victim to the Dunning-Kruger effect, where learning a little about a topic may make you feel overconfident in your own knowledge. Think about the concept of knowing just enough to be dangerous. By instead, learning the nuances and details provided in the full text you can see more of the blind spots that both allow you to appreciate the work done by the author and to understand where your knowledge or lack thereof stands. For that, I encourage you to use this method as a discovery tool to find books that you then wish to go purchase or to brush up on concepts and books read long ago. Finally, there is the ethics of the situation. In today's modern world, you have to draw your own ethical lines. Some will argue that this whole thing is piracy and theft that ChatGPT stole copyrighted work, and that I shouldn't even cover it or encourage it. Others will argue that in a free and open internet, all of this information should be accessible to anyone. 
Some might focus on the money that it takes away from artists who created and crafted the concepts that we're looking up. Others might say that these authors have enough money already, or even that they will benefit more from their ideas and concepts being shared than they would by a single book sale. No matter where you stand, you must admit that this is a complex problem and the world as we know it has a long way to go to reckon with all of these consequences of this new modern internet. But for now, use reverse summarization to learn, to discover, to decide, and way more. Just remember to thank those that helped you to learn, whether that's through buying their books, sharing their work, reaching out to them directly, or even just following them on social media. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.